Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're taking a closer look at the temptations that people have to see if we can figure out why we're tempted to commit sins. People generally commit sins because they're after something they want, and they sin in an attempt to get it. So we're looking over the things people want. Today, sloth. A sloth is a type of mammal, but it's also a type of behavior defined like this. Definition 1a. Disinclination to action or labor. Indolence. In short, sloth is basically laziness, the repeated choice to avoid work or effort in the things you do. And this is one that it's very easy to fall into, especially when the work isn't something you personally enjoy. Sloth is also a vice, a weakness of character which, while not explicitly sinful in all cases, does make people more vulnerable to other evil temptations. If a person is lazy, they tend to get less done and are more likely to be a burden on their loved ones. Also, they're less likely to help people who need it or even do the will of God when it involves work or effort. Sloth isn't the same thing as being tired or worn out. Generally, there's some biological or chemical reason for those feelings. It's also not sloth if the work a person does isn't physically strenuous, like making phone calls, sewing, or cashier work. Some non-athletic jobs are among the most important and lucrative. Sloth is when you could, even should, take action, but just choose not to. Aside from how unhelpful a slothful person can be, sloth can also endanger the soul. A person who doesn't want to work on knowing their faith or being charitable to others won't make much progress spiritually. So, why do people want to be lazy? Well, this is one situation where I really don't think very many people actually want laziness, though some do have desires that are incompatible with swift, efficient action. What they want is to have things done for them or for hard tasks to become easier. The disappointment that they feel when things turn out to be much harder than they expected contributes to their hesitation and sluggishness in working. Obviously, work that's backbreaking or drudgery isn't going to be present in heaven, and the people of heaven will do work that's not futile, like work here on earth often is. That's how God meant for work to be, the tending of plants and animals good for food in the Garden of Eden so that people would benefit from the fruits of their own work. Since the fall, that state of affairs has disappeared, but each of us still longs for that life of beneficial, efficient tasks that don't wear us out and aren't excessively difficult to do. While we're here on earth, though, we often need to commit to doing hard, strenuous tasks in order to fulfill some obligation we're under, or for someone else's benefit. God can help by giving us the strength to complete difficult work if we ask him for it, but of course, we have to do our part. We should always remember that God rewards people who are good workers. But after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and reckoned with them. And he that had received the five talents coming brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou didst deliver to me five talents. Behold, I have gained other five over and above. His Lord saith to him, Well done, good and faithful servant, because thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will place thee over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Matthew 25, 19-21 Next time, the temptation of our own longings. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.